I'm going to show you how to make an animator controller in Unity, but the easy way. Let's get started. At a basic level, an animator controller is what helps you to create the logic for your animations, hook them up to player input, and access them via code. For this project, I'm going to be using the tiny dragon asset from the Unity Asset Store, which has an absolute death grip on me. However, I'm going to be posting some free versions in the comments below, so feel free to check those out. Assets like these will typically come with their own animations, however it's up to you to create the animator controller depending on your game's unique logic. Let's start by getting our model into the scene, and as you'll see here, there is an animator controller here, but it's used for us to be able to see all of the animations, not made for gameplay, so we need to remove that and create our own. Before I do that though, I'm going to copy over all of the settings and components that we created in a previous episode from the player onto the new dragon game object. Most notably, the lives manager and the character controller. If you missed those, I'll put a link up here if you want to go back and watch them. Now if we press play, we can see how the dragon interacts without any animations. Now let's create our animator controller. Right click, go to create, and then animator controller. And I'm going to be naming mine dragon controller. Let's make sure our new animator controller is plugged in. Let's double click our controller and head on over to the animator tab. Unity supplies us with these three states, but the first question we need to ask ourselves is what animation do we want our character to default to? Typically, this is called the idle state, and for you, this might look a little bit different depending on your project, but for our little dragon friend, this is going to be some sort of flying idle state. To create our idle state, we're just going to right click, create new state, and then create empty. I'm going to rename this state flying idle, just for clarity, and now let's go into the motion section and select which animation we want to play for this. With no other animations added, this is the result when we click play. It's looking pretty good already, however, when the player collides with one of the columns, he just kind of poof, disappears, so let's change that by adding a death animation. I actually feel a little bad, but forward we go. So this animation is going to be a little bit different than the last one because we're not coming in straight off of the entry state. But the first part is the same, so we'll create a new state, I'm going to rename it and then select the animation that I want to play. Except this time I'm going to right click on the flying idle state and then make a transition from flying idle into death. If we click on the transition we get a little bit more info than we had before and we can actually set up logic and parameters here to tell Unity how to handle the transition. This is where the programming logic starts to come in. So we're going to want to go over to the parameters tab and create a new bool parameter that we can call in our code. We also want to tell the animator when to make this transition. So if this parameter is dead is equal to true, now we can play the transition. Since I already have the logic of player death outlined in my lives manager script, that's where I'm going to go to add this parameter. To access the isDead parameter, I first need to create a variable so that I can talk to my animator. I then need to tell Unity that when the game starts, um, the myAnimator variable is equal to the animator component on my game object. And now, where I've already outlined the logic for player death, I'm going to access my animator and set the bool isDead equal to true. Very important note here, you're going to want to make sure to set your parameter before you destroy your game object. If you do it the other way around, your game object will destroy first and then Unity will have nothing to animate and it will throw you in error. If we hit play, you can see that this isn't working quite as expected and there's nothing wrong with the animator, but the game object is simply destroying before Unity has time to finish running the death animation. So instead of just destroying the game object, we're going to add a delay. So we're going to say destroy game object, and then we're going to access the animator, the animator state, and then the length of the animation. And all of that leaves us with this proper on death animation playing. Join me in the next episode where I turn those green columns into columns of fire with Unity particle effects. Hope to see you there.